Hello, everyone. Let's uh, welcome to our next talk in Security Dev Room. And let's welcome Robert and uh, his talk about uh, transparent data encryption in MySQL and Percona server. Hi, hello. Um, my name is Robert. I've been working on uh, transparent data encryption in uh, Percona server for the last three years. And before that, I was working at Oracle uh, at uh, transparent data encryption in MySQL. So today I want to kind of show how the internals works, how it's all connected, and what are, what's that, what are things to look at when you decide to t turn it on in your server. So first thing we need to cover are keyrings. Um, so basically those are plugins uh, which Percona server and MySQL use to store encryption key or to communicate between uh, vault server servers with keys, key stores uh, or uh, or just just a file so they come in two fa uh, flavors one is uh, server based so keyring plugin connects to server takes keys from the server put that into in cache memory and pro provides that to mysql or percona server so those keys are uh, cached in memory. And apart, so as I said, it can communicate with the server or it can just use a, um, a file uh, to store the keys. So when you install uh, Keyring, the installation itself is always successful because in MySQL and in Percona, you need to have a plugin installed to be able to um, use its variables. And uh, so we will, should get, if you didn't provide enough information, warnings in your server log file that you should um, you know, set up Kirin Vault config uh, options or for Kirin Vault uh, plugin or Kirin file data for Kirin file plugin. So when you set up one of those variables um, actually, uh, for Kirin Vault, Kirin Vault config, the uh, Percona server will try to connect to Vault server and check it uh, and check if it's if it's working. And the same with queuing file data. So that will try to load the uh, keys from 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 the file and check the version, check if nobody manipulate the uh, queuing file, um, and it, it, is, it checks the uh, checksum. And if it's all right, it allows the uh, Percona server or MySQL to use those keys. So with queuing file, um, all information are loaded immediately from, from file with keys. Um, so when you select from a table that was uh, encrypted, the key that is used to decrypt the, uh, the table is available for sure in memory. And with Keyring Vault, it's a bit different, and it comes with also Keyring OKV or different other Keyring AWS that you can use with MySQL. Uh, it doesn't retrieve all the data uh, on the startup from, uh, from the key server, just the list of the, um, of, of the, uh, of the keys. So you may ask, uh, so what happens if I try to select from a table, encrypted table, and key is not there? So it, it will retrieve the keys also on the startup, but just the active ones. And I will show that a bit later. Um, the weird thing about queuing file is that we implemented it when you, change, when you do a single change uh, into uh, queuing file. First, the backup file is created. So the whole content of a queuing file is, uh, is copied. And after that, if the change in the in-memory cache is successful, it will be swapped with the current queuing file. So the reason we did that is because we, we don't know how many users are going to use it. And there are so. so if, and if it becomes a bottleneck ever, we will kind of change it. But every single change to queuing, is, it means uh, copies all the file, uh, all, all the queuing file, and also dumps all the memory of queuings into the file. So it's rewritten each and every time. 
Um, with Kirin Vault, it's much uh, less intensive, I would say. Uh, it just sends a key over a network or request of deletion of a key uh, from Vault server. Uh, there are problems like connection lags, of course, with this kind of approach, but you cannot do without them. Mm. Also, there is a concept of that you should have a separate place in your key store where you uh, store your keys per keyring. So imagine you have a cluster and you have uh, like a, a master and slave and both of them using the same place in your vault server uh, where they store the keys. Then you would get the clash between the names of the keys, of course. Um, so with, uh, in MySQL, master key is a unique, has a unique name. I will talk about that also later. But when you use Keyring UDF, there is a special plugin that users can store their own uh, keys, keys into the vault server. That becomes a problem because those names are not unique. Um, so this kind of separation is natural for Keyring file because Keyring file is next to the uh, server itself. So it's not a problem. There would be a file per each server. But there is some work needed for when you use um, HashiCorp Vault's uh, server or uh, Oracle, Key Vault, Oracle Key Vault, for, for that matter. Um, I don't know if you guys use uh, Vault. It's very cool uh, open source uh, uh, server for key storing keys. And you, you in uh, key <coughs> In Kirin Vault, uh, in Kirin Vault, you provide a mount point uh, where the keys should be stored by Kirin Vault in Vault Server. So you can do the separation by providing different mount points to each Kirin. But that's a kind of a um, high privilege thing to do. So you would have to have a privileges to create mount point, and you may not want to do that to give that privileges to all your DBAs. So the Vault server also provides you th that you can create a, um, one mount point and provide a path to Keyring Vault configuration file. And when the first uh, key is sent to Keyring Vault, Vault server will automatically create a directory in that um, um, mount point. And when you delete the last key from that path, uh, Vault server will also delete the um, the directory. So yeah, so this is the configuration file for Kirin Vault. Uh, Vault URL, so that's the, the URL of Vault Server. The secret mount point you need to create on Vault Server where the keys are gonna be stored and you can use this path to separate those uh, places for each uh, server, Percona server. Then you have a token uh, a token is provided to you by Vault Server. It's one one-time token and Vault certificate. So this one is optional because you can add your uh, Vault certificate into uh, to your machine. So it would be trusted by machine, or you can provide it here, and uh, Kirin Vault will use it to authenticate the Vault Server. Um, we store keys inside Vault Server in Base64 uh, encoding. So whenever you are in a position you want to list your keys in, in Vault Server, you should just decode it. So here we have um, decoded something, and it appears it's a <clears throat> master key. Um, and I will talk a bit about how this is structured. <coughs> yes, and also the master key here has a UUID of a server embedded in its name, so it's a unique name, so you can kind of use a <coughs> common place in this vault server <coughs> sorry, to store keys from different MySQL or Percona servers. And <coughs> you can use also Keyring UDF um, plugin, and this uh, Keyring UDF is users can use to store its own uh, keys in the vault server or, or in this Keyring file um, 
file, and you can generate a new uh, new key fetch. You have also you can also fetch key length type. Historic new key and remove a key. So how does this you know, DB encryption is really <coughs> done? So in MySQL, table space consists of pages. So we have table spaces, which are <coughs> uh, a set of tables, or you can have a per file table space, which is a one table has its own dedicated table space, and, th and that's it. And in MySQL, the encryption works on a table space level. So you can have whole table space encrypted, but you cannot have some tables encrypted in table space. So what is master key encryption? It's an uh, envelope encryption. So you use one uh, key uh, to, uh, to encrypt other keys in, in the server. <coughs> Sorry. So we have a key, uh, master key resides in keyring that we already discussed. And then we have a, a server-generated key per table uh, inside MySQL uh, data directory. So whenever a, a table is to be encrypted, uh, a key is generated for it by Percona server itself. And so it stays next to the data it encrypts. So in order for it to stay next to the data, it encrypts, it has to be also encrypted. And this, is, this key is encrypted by the master key coming from Keyring. Uh, so <clears throat> encryption, table space key is stored in a table space <coughs> header. So in, for, <clears throat> and this is how this header looks like. So we have some versioning, three version already. Key, key ID and UUID are used for uh, combine, combine together to get the master key ID. Then we have a table space key and IV, so initiation vector, that are together encrypted with the master key. And as the, next, as the last part is a checksum of table space key and IV, uh, and IV. But the checksum itself is taken from plain text table space key and IV, not the unencrypted one. So yeah, when we combine key ID and UUID, we get the uh, <clears throat> master key ID. So how do we know which master key we should fetch from keying to decrypt a table? Because we have this table A, let's say, and we have a key. There can be multiple master keys in a keying. So we need to have this ID by looking at uh, table space header. We take key ID and UUID and we combine it and we have the master key ID. So we know how to, which key master key we should fetch from the queuing. But the queuings can be swapped and we may have a queuing with a key ID that is okay for us to fetch, that we are looking for, but it turns out that it's a wrong key, wrong key right? Because the queuings were swapped or something. So how we make sure that the key itself is correct because if we start using incorrect key for decrypting data, we'll get the whole mess. Well, the server will crash, basically. Um, so we do that by, uh, by checking this Sears checksum. So, uh, we retrieve master key, decrypt table space key and IV. We do the checksum of those two, and we check, uh, and we match it. Sorry. Yeah, and we match, match it with the CRC32 from the uh, table space header. So once that compared and it's okay, we know that it's safe to use this key to decrypt this table space. <clears throat> so how do we make sure that we are able to decrypt table when we need it? As I showed at the beginning, with Keyring Vault we just fetch the list of the keys and active keys. And this is how we know which keys are active. Uh, so at the startup of the, tab uh, of the server, uh, we read page zero of each table space where table space header resides. So if there is encrypted table space, it says flag set 
to be encrypted. We read page zero, read table space header. We get the master key from Keyring, so we check if we can connect to Keyring. We do the decryption and we check the CRC32. So by, by that we know that we are okay to decrypt this table. But if any of those steps fail, we have to say that the table space is just missing. Uh, we don't say we cannot decrypt it, it will just show us missing table space. Um, so this, this part is done on the startup of the server, so it's important to have a limited number of master keys active in, the, uh, in MySQL, because if you have a, a, a lot of them, that would mean that there will be a lot of uh, transmission between Vault Server and your MySQL instance on the startup. So when you're rebooting, it will slow down your reboots. So let's talk about what crypto we use in uh, MySQL. Uh, first one is AS256 uh, ECB. So this is the famous picture why it's insecure. <clears throat> because it's not a randomized algorithm. So uh, you can see the repetition uh, in the uh, plain text by looking at the ciphertext. So it will always like encode the same value to the same value. So for, if, it's a, if it's a black pixel, it, let's say it, it will encode it as a gray pixel. And we can see where the shape of the penguin by looking at the ciphertext. So wh why we are using it? Because we are using it only for table space key and IV. And table space key uh, itself is a random thing. So it should not have like a deterministic um, repetition in it. And since the, there is no rep uh, deterministic repetition, it's okay to use here and we kind of save IV. Because if you have this uh, ECB, you don't have to have IV. Uh, okay, so this is the block picture of how, how AAS basically works. It takes 128 bits of text, 256 bit long encryption key, and provides the ciphertext. So AAS 256 in the AAS, it means the length of the key. But it always works on like 128 bits long uh, block of, uh, of text. Um, for page encryption, we use AAS 256CBC, so change one, uh, changed, and it's a randomized one, so you get no repetition this way. Um, so how do you get the randomization? Basically, you never encrypt the same plain text uh, twice. So to do that, you add uh, to your plain text IV, so initialization vector. So it's important to have the initialization vector and key itself always to be different when you start encoding with CBC or CTR. We also use CTR, but I don't have time. <laughs> okay, a bit about master key rotation. So when it's useful, um, there's two cases actually. Uh, when you end up in a situation you have a lot of master keys in your vault server and your uh, startup is getting slow because of that. You can re you can ask the MySQL Operational Server to re-encrypt all your table space keys with the new master key. And that's also uh, must, uh, the master key rotation is also important when you uh, for, for security reasons because you can lose your keying and you don't know about it. So it's a good thing to to rotate it from time to time. And how does it look like? So we re-encrypt re with the new master key, the table space key and IV, and we, add, uh, we change the key ID and UUID to the new ones. So, so it will all point to one master key. Uh, we don't have to update this checksum of table space key and IV because it always stays, stays the same. Mm, and it's because of that, because it's always stays the same, it's also the biggest drawback, drawback of master key encryption. So imagine you have the table space key and somebody stalls this once because he has or she has access to your core dump. Uh, so he will be able to decrypt your data 
although you are not aware of it. You can rotate your master key, but that won't help you because this table space key that is actually used to encrypt a table will stay the same. So we are working on some mitigation for that in Percona server now. So those were the dark bugs. We have also binlog encryption. So binlog is a place where MySQL and Percona server drops its uh, events, we call it, and those events are then replicated to your slave servers uh, in your replication schema. So for binlog encryption in 5.7, you have to provide two variables, encrypt binlog, so it will just encrypt the binlog, but you have also to provide master verified checksum. And why, why is it that? Because when masters, a master server is encrypting, uh, it's decrypting its, master, uh, its binlog, <clears throat> after decryption, it will have to check if it used the correct key. And for that, it will just verify the checksum, that the checksum of an event is okay before sending it to slave. Otherwise, it could, you could, it could send just uh, trash to slave server and, and crush it. So that would be a, also a point of attack. And in, <clears throat> for binlong encryption in phase seven, we provide a new event that it's never transferred across the network. So after this event, all the binlog is, rest of the binlog is encrypted. So MySQL reads the binlog, sees this event at the beginning, it knows it has to start decrypting. <clears throat> this event is never sent over the network because slave server doesn't need to know that um, binlog in master, ser master server is encrypted. And this event is sent over an, a network in a plain text. So you have to have a TLS connection between master and slave. <coughs> so, MySQL well, binlog cannot decrypt. However, there is an option that you can connect your MySQL binlog reader into your uh, ser uh, MySQL server. MySQL server will read the binlog and send it over to MySQL binlog. So you can kind of use it when you have a, an encrypted um, binlog also. <clears throat> we have also binlog encryption in 8.0 in upstream implementation. It basically works the same as master key encryption. You have just a replication master key in your key ring and uh, a server-generated key per binlog. When you turn it on, <clears throat> master key uh, per corner server will just rot enable rotation of a, a binlog, so the new file will be created with, because you have a number of fi binlog files in your MySQL New file will be created, and from, starting from that file, each, all belongs will be encrypted. We have also undo table space encryption and read block encryption. It's almost same as the binlog encryption. Also, system table space and double write buffers encryption. So this is the thing that is only in the um, Percona server. So there is a system table space encryption in MySQL IB data one. And in this table space, there is also double write buffer, uh, which is not encrypted in MySQL, and we think it's a, it's a problem because all the data, before it gets written to the disk, to the pages, to the um, table spaces, goes through the, this double write buffer. So if it's unencrypted, it basically means you can read anything, even though you have encryption turned on. <clears throat> MySQL IB data is a new table space for storing data dictionary. Uh, information, so it's also encrypted. And in Percona server, we have a parallel double write buffer, which you can also encrypt. So thank you. This is for Percona Live. So the, for, the solution with master key, there is no solution. You can just alter encryption to no and alter encryption to yes. So it will generate a new table space key, but you have to do it on your own. Oh, yeah, yeah, but those are encryption threads that will 
will work not with this two uh, level encryption that you have table space key and master key. It will just use key directly from keyring. So you can have new versions of keys and change the keyring. Yeah, sorry, we are out of the time. So if, if you've got some other questions, uh, please uh, reach out uh, after the talk.